Welcome to the final IMB session for this afternoon here on the Cooperative Program stage. My name is Ed Harelko, Chief Marketing and Communications Officer for the International Mission Board. With me, Dr. Paul Chitwood, President of the IMB. We've got Scott Ray, our IMB Director of Assessment and Deployment. We've got Oscar T, our Hispanic Church Mobilization Strategist, and Brian Zuniga, IMB Trustee, Chairman of our Training Committee, and also Director of Discipleship at California Baptist University. This afternoon, we're gonna be talking about the ways that the IMB is sending and how we are making improvements in our sending process and mobilization process to make sure we get more missionaries out in the field. But first, Dr. Chitwood, why don't you tell us a little bit about the new brand and the missionary presence component and why it's crucial for us to get people out on the field. Well, thank you, Ed, and it's all about sending at the IMB. We're in a season of growth, of wanting to send more of uh, your missionaries to the ends of the earth, and we're excited about the opportunity to do that. Uh, we hope that this new brand communicates what we do as an organization. Honestly, we do a lot, and we've been doing it a long time. Uh, the IMB began 177 years ago and is working all around the world and has been over the course of those 177 years. The IMB is known for a lot of different things. So a part of, <coughs> excuse me, part of our new branding process was coming to the point of distilling down who we are as an organization and what the one essential thing is that we do. Thinking about that, it just became clear to us that over these 177 years, the one thing that we've always done and that we will always do as long as we exist as an organization is send missionaries, a sustained missionary presence, sending the, being the sending arm of Southern Baptist churches who send through the IMB is what the IMB is about. That's critical because what we do together as Southern Baptists is address the world's greatest problem. What is the world's greatest problem? The world's greatest problem in a word is lostness. It's an eternal problem. In fact, it's the only problem of the many problems that we face in life, the many problems in our world today. It's the only problem that lasts beyond death. It is the eternal problem. It's also a universal problem. This problem applies to every person who has ever lived or who will ever live because of the fall, because of our sin. We are lost and we stand under the judgment of God. What we get to do at the IMB, together in partnership with every Southern Baptist church, is address this, the world's greatest problem. How do we address that problem? Well, thankfully, God has given us a solution, and that solution is the gospel. Getting the gospel to those who have yet to hear it, who still are bound by the problem of lostness, is what the IMB is about. We call that a missionary presence, sustaining a missionary presence among the lost around the world. That's what the IMB is about. That's what our new brand communicates. Thank you. And Scott, with missionary presence being such a key component of our new brand, what is the IMB doing to make sure we can get more applicants and get them to the field where they need to be faster? Yeah, we're working on many different things have been for quite a while, where to get more people to the field, we have simplified who can go. So basically, if there is someone in your church that wants to go to the nations, they can go to the nations. There is a spot for them. As far as the process, we have worked to simplify that process in a way bringing in the church more and more into our process so that we're working together to bring applicants through or allowing them to be healthy and sustainable when they do leave, right? So we are making that very much quicker for them to get to the field. And we've diversified our candidate consultants so that we can work with really underrepresented, underrepresented mission force from the SBC, whether that's from the black and African American churches or the Hispanic churches, the Korean churches, building pipelines so those members can come with the IMB and already be prepared when they go. And speaking to that final point uh, that you made, we have Oscar from our mobilization team as well. And Oscar, as someone that's out there on the front lines helping churches to figure out how they can partner with the IMB and how they can send people. Um, 
How has it made a difference for you to be able to go out and reach into communities where they recognize you're part of that community, that you represent the ethnic diversity that the IMB is looking for? Yeah, just like uh, when we send missionaries to the field, we have to deal with culture, uh, dealing with our ethnic uh, pastors and, and churches. Culture plays a lot into that. Um, we can communicate the lostness, right? That, that's our message, the lostness. We can communicate that in the heart language of the pastor. Uh, we can communicate that, uh, bringing culture uh, with, uh, with, with the pastors as well. We can communicate either, in my case, I'm the Hispanic mobilizer. I can communicate the, the need of more missionaries in the field, Hispanic missionaries. But, uh, but I know that my brothers... Uh, the African-American mobilizer and the Asian mobilizer can also communicate that uh, with their constituents. So it has been a great investment for us because we've seen the opportunities ticking up. I'll give you a, a, an example. Uh, I've been working with the Florida Baptist Convention for three years. And this year, the Florida Baptist Convention is sending about 70 second and third generation Hispanics on mission. And that is an effort and a result of the investment of having um, ethnic mobilizers uh, working with our churches. Thank you for that. Uh, Brian, you're in a unique position, both as a leader on one of our committees as a trustee, but also in how you work in discipling students at Cal Baptist. Um, what benefits do you see and what would you tell students who are looking to go overseas and be part of missions? Yeah. Uh, okay, so look, there's, I used to feel like it was really hard to figure out how to go with the IMB. And I, I feel like how I would explain it is like on the Wizard of Oz where they pull back the curtain and you see the wizard and you're like, the IMB's really said, hey, here's how to go. And there's some really clear steps now that you can walk through. Um, I think the first thing, if I was a college student and just dabbling in this, I would go to, I am, what's, what's camera? The middle one, that one. IMB.org slash training. Say it again, IMB.org slash training. We're not hiding our training materials. We're like giving them out for free. So you can actually go, there's, I, I'd say one of the, the best tools that I've seen is something that we want everyone to walk through. It's deep in discipleship. So if you just go to that, you can get someone to invest in you, hand them out and say, disciple, mentor me. That's a great first step for college students. So as a follow-up question, since you work with a, a generation that uh, a lot of people create a trope about or they mischaracterize oh, sure, the yeah. generation, uh, I think it's important to notice that these are students who want to find ways to serve, right? Absolutely, yeah. This, so I've worked with Gen X, Millennials, and now Gen Z. And there's not like one perfect, except for Gen X. Um, <laughs> but beyond that, uh, I would say like Gen Z right now, it's super cool to see they, they work in community, they move in community. So they want mentors, they want people investing in them, and they want a church that says, let me help you discover a call to follow God to the nations. Instead of just an individualized, good luck, go find your calling. They want a church that walks with them in that. And they're ready to go if you just walk with them in that. I think you've brought up a really good point about them wanting a church that helps yep. them. This isn't just a direct to the IMB approach. This is through local churches, and this is in partnership with local churches. Yep. So thanks for reminding them of that. Scott, I have a follow-up question for you. Um, people don't always know what it's like to serve with the IMB, so they have to learn that. When you first get applicants coming in, what are some of the things you tell them about what makes the IMB unique and why they should consider going with the IMB? Obviously, they've gotten to the point where they're asking the questions, but what, what is it that makes us unique and a good fit for Southern Baptists? Well, what makes us unique and a good fit for Southern Baptists, I think first and foremost is a shared theology, right? Uh, many organizations that uh, serve a large theological base, right, they, people go to the field, they end up on teams with 
with people that have very different beliefs. And so when that happens, right, the, the number one reason people leave the field is team conflict. Well, on our teams, at the very base, we all believe the same thing. We ensure that, right? Another thing that sets us apart is just the, the care that we give to our missionaries, right? We, we don't require them to raise their own funds. That comes through the cooperative program, through Lottie Moon, right? And along with that, though, they also get care from uh, medical coordinators. They get people that help them through member care. They get logistical help. They get help with their children as they go through uh, the school ages, right? So there's all kind of benefits that come with, with going with the IMB that a lot of times people aren't aware of. So we make sure they understand that right away. And Oscar, follow-up question for you. When you work with the congregations you work with and the churches you work with, uh, what are some of the things that when you share with them about the IMB, you just watch them light up or you watch them really start to get interested? Anything you can think of that uh, has really worked well in the churches you work with? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of the churches, they want to hear the stories, the stories of what, is, uh, what our missionaries are doing. Uh, I can... I can tell you that Hispanics, they love knowing what our missionaries are doing and how their giving and their praying is, uh, is, being, uh, trans is transforming lives um, in the mission field. Uh, and also knowing how to get to becoming a missionary, how to pray, how to give, how to go, and how to send. So we're working together with the assessment and deployment team when it, com when it comes to that, but also as far as... Uh, Mobilizing, they also want to know the resources that we have uh, in Spanish, in Korean, in Chinese, in the different languages uh, to, be, to be able to help and mobilize the churches, to be able to help and get them to uh, uh, mobilize, to, to pray, to mobilize them to maybe take a short-term trip. So those are the opportunities that I've seen every time we share about the IMB. And you know, one other thing I'd say is <coughs> Dr. Chetwood talked about lostness. Right. In our foundations document, we say that we are about the core missionary ch task, about planting churches among the lost people and places of the world. Not all organizations can say that. Right? So when people come with us, they know they are going to be a part of affecting lostness right, in the world around them right now that you know, moves on through eternity. Thank you. Dr. Chitwood, uh, lostness is a problem that's not going away anytime soon. And since you started as the IMB president, you've made it a priority to rebuild our missionary pipeline. And now we have a healthy bank of missionary candidates. Why is this so important for us right now to continue to press into this and to continue to add people to our pipeline? I think the best illustration I could think of is the fact that more lost people will die today than on any day in human history upon which the sun has risen and set. And tomorrow, that number will be greater than it is today. The day after that, it will be even greater. The problem of lostness is a greater problem today than at any day before in human history. And it is a problem that continues to grow. Could you imagine Southern Baptists with our resources, the number of churches we have, the number of people we have, the number of missionaries we could potentially send. Could we imagine Southern Baptists have a shrinking missionary force when the problem of lostness is a growing problem and it is an eternal problem? So for us as an organization, rebuilding that missionary force has been priority number one. When I came into my role in November of 2015, our missionary candidate pipeline, which is what we essentially refer to as that group of people who has applied to go through the IMB, and they're somewhere along the way in the process. The missionary candidate pipeline for career missionary candidates was at 82. Our combined missionary pipeline for all categories in which you could serve through the IMB was at just over 200. Today, with Scott's help, the help of his team, the help of the mobilization team and others, uh, we are sitting at right at 1,000, just under 1,000 candidates in the pipeline. So we've seen a quadrupling of the number of candidates in the pipeline. How grateful we are for 
uh, the fact that more and more Southern Baptist churches are sending through the IMB. We want to see that continue to grow. Uh, Zane Pratt is here uh, sitting with us in, in the circle just off stage. Zane leads the team that is really out in front on this, that has rebuilt uh, our, uh, our Sydney pipeline, rebuilt those systems that Brian was talking about and that Scott was talking about to get people more easily through the process, to involve their local church more, to involve their pastor more, where it's more of a combined cooperative effort to get missionaries to the field. We're really hoping to see that pipeline get to 12, even 1,400 candidates consistently in the pipeline. We are seeing unprecedented generosity of Southern Baptists in giving through the cooperative program and especially through the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. The IMB had its best financial year in history this past fiscal year. We are about two-thirds of the way through the current fiscal year. We are blowing last year out of the water in terms of the growing generosity, the growing giving of Southern Baptists. This creates a greater opportunity to send. So we're encouraging pastors, call out the call. And when anyone expresses any interest uh, in your church for the nations, any heart for the nations, send them to the IMB. Uh, get them to imb.org uh, where they can fill out an application online. Uh, reach out by email uh, to info uh, at uh, imb.org. Uh, reach out uh, uh, by phone uh, to the organization. Let us walk with you and your church and that uh, a missionary candidate, we'll call them, uh, through the process of discerning their call. Uh, so we would say you know, you don't, they don't have to be at the end of the process where it's clear they know exactly where they're going, exactly what they're going to do. No, if they're expressing a heart for the nations and they're trying to determine, Lord, what do you want me to do? Let us walk with them and walk with you as a church in that discernment process. That gets them into the candidate pool. We'll trust God uh, to reveal to them, uh, does he for sure want them to go overseas as a missionary, or does he simply want them to be uh, a part of what we should all doing, and that's mobilizing to the nations. Uh, or where does he want them to go? Where does he want them to serve? All those questions are answered through the process. But what we're really, really excited about is the fact that uh, after a, a decade of decline, from 2008 to 2018, 10 years in which we lost 2,000 of our frontline missionaries. We went from about 5,600 down to about 3,500 missionaries overseas. We're now seeing growth again. We're seeing the growth in provision through generous giving. We're seeing the growth in candidates. We're seeing the growth in sending. So if you take any message away uh, from uh, what you hear at the IMB this week, what you experience at the Southern Baptist Convention with relation to the International Mission Board, take that away. Spread the word near and far. The IMB is sending again. There's opportunities to go, short-term, mid-term, long-term career opportunities. Help us spread the word in your church family, to your association, your state convention. Help us get the word out because 157,690 people will die today having given no indication that they've heard and believed the gospel. Hell is real and hell is eternal. There's no greater problem. This is the world's greatest problem. We want to address it with you and your church together. Thank you for that, Dr. Chitwood. Uh, one of the things that's impressed me is as I meet our missionaries, there's no one-size-fits-all approach to being a missionary. Uh, there are people that are starting young and they're going to the missions field. There are pastors who are deciding that their calling is now to go into the missions field. Uh, we have room to add all types of people. So if anybody is interested or wants to know how you can go about uh, partnering with the IMB, whether it's to send or even to go, imb.org forward slash go. That's imb.org forward slash go. Or, just drop, by, or go. just drop by the booth. You can Even see our better. marker right there. We've got our, our missionary presence point there, so stop by the booth. Thank you all very much. Thank you, gentlemen.